Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. So, welcome on board to the MySport Challenge Pathology Dynasis 2021. So, I'm so happy to have you all on site and also online to join our first training workshop. So, I am Felix, Felix Lau from Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. So, I'm the Technology Corporation Manager in Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. So, I'm also one of the uh, organizer of this event. So what is MySport? Does anyone know here? So MySport is a Huawei developed AI, very useful framework. So what are we doing here today is to teach you how to use My MySport to develop your own AI model. And also we will briefly talk to you about a little bit uh, of the background of the contest. So today is the first training workshop. Later on, we are going to have the second one and also have a briefing session on 28th September. So remember, 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 if you have time, join all of our workshops. So let me briefly introduce you about our competition. In this competition, you are invited to use MySport as an AI training and influencing framework for what? for developing a trustworthy AI pathology diagnosis model that ensure what? Privacy, explainable and high accuracy. So in this scheme, in this challenge, we have limited quota, 30 teams. So we have already received a lot of registrations online. So if you haven't registered for the game, don't miss it. And the team size is about one, two, three people. So you can form your own team with your colleagues, with your friends. And also, you can also find an instructor to help you on designing your model or to talk to you together, find some expert in computer science or find some expert in pathology as well to discuss with you what you can do. So what is, what is included in, in our event? Like today, we have the workshop, we have pitching and we have award ceremony later on. So we have two main stage, two main stage in this event. The first one is the model evaluation, which means you are building your own model, you're training your own model, training on your computer, and later on maybe you can train it on Huawei Cloud Model Art. And then if you get the high score enough, we will invite you to go to the pitching stage. So be careful, you have to fight with your team uh, uh, competitors all together to get the high, highest rank, highest score to enter the final pitching. So who are we? We are Huawei, we are Hong Kong STP, and we're Ambipi and Ibini. So we are the organizer here. First of all, from Huawei, we have Huawei Cloud Hong Kong and also Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. So what is Huawei Cloud? Huawei Cloud is a leading cloud service provider committing to bringing affordable, effective, and reliable cloud and AI services through the technological innovation. So today in our training workshop now, we will give you have a chance to use Huawei Cloud Model Art to train your model. We will briefly teach you how to build your own MySport AI model on Huawei Cloud Model Art. So you can do it also on your computer. It supports CPU, GPU, and also Huawei Ascend CPU, uh, 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 AI processors. So Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. We do research here in Hong Kong, in AI, in fundamental theory, chips, microarchitectures, software engineering, trustworthy software, and so on and so on. If you are PhD or master level, we are always looking for top researchers to join this. If you're undergraduate, we are also looking for you to come to join as an intern as well. So we have 250 more researchers in Hong Kong and almost half of us are holding a PhD degree. So for Hong Kong Science Park, you know very well, right? It is a public corporation set by the Hong Kong government in 2001 to foster the development and you know, innovation and technology in Hong Kong. So it cultivates successful innovation and technologies, companies, and so on. And then we have two other companies uh, helping us to organize and also sponsoring us 
to having the data that we are using in this competition. Guangzhou LBP Medicine, Anbiping. So it's founded in 2005. It is the first listed company on the Science and Technology Board at the Shanghai Stock Exchange in the field of pathology diagnosis in China. It has more than 500 registered products and it's covered nearly 1,800 medical institutions in China. So also, his subsidiary, Ai Bingli, Bingli it, is a, it is also the company it founded in 2017. They provide the real-time visual field sharing system and pathology medical image analysis and processing system. They are widely used already in China for intelligent diagnosis, data management, and data quality control. So in our competitions, we have a bunch of pathology image status. These are sponsored by these two companies. So what is the timeline of this competition? We are now here today, the first day, September 16. We have this MySball fundamental training. We'll teach you how to use MySball, how to use model art on Huawei Cloud, and so on. And on the coming Monday, we are having an AI image pathology diagnosis training. So this one will teach you much more important information to help you to get higher scores. So I am not an expert on this field. You know that we are, some of us are students, we are, some of us are from companies, so we are from different backgrounds. So we will have an expert here to teach you about much more information on, on, on this field. And then for the registration, you have to complete your registration before uh, 24th September. And then on 28th September, we have a briefing session again to help you give you a chance to raise questions to us directly, especially when you start registering uh, within these two weeks, we are sending you a confirmation very soon in the coming two weeks. So when you get your email confirmation, you can start to train your own model. And then make sure that you have your submission on or before 15 October, before 23, 59, 59. So we will take that time as the judging time for your model score. If you have the highest top six model score, we will invite this team into the final pitching round. So in the final pitching round, it will be happen on 22nd October. You will be invited to come to Hong Kong STP again to have your final presentation. So for the final presentation, you can have a chance to talk about how do you design your AI model? What do you found in the data? And you can have your own business or innovation idea to explain to the expert or to the users, explain to the judges what you can do with your training model or what other creativity ideas that you have for this pathology diagnosis. At the end, we, you're invited to join the award ceremony on 26 October. So remember all these days, mark it on your calendar and don't miss it. So for the final pitching, we'll be in October 22nd in the Inno Cell Square. In Inno Square, our next building 17W. So we start at 2.30 PM. So we will have some welcoming speech a solution pitching from you, and also an on-site evaluation by the judges. And then you will be invited to join the Huawei Cloud Summit 2021. And it will be a great event to, to gather a lot of AI experts and also a lot of uh, senior from the business sectors uh, in Grand Hyatt Hong Kong. So you will be the one stand on top uh, on the podium to, to receive your, your award. So what is your price? You can have two ways to get your price, actually three ways. So the first one, of course, your model score. If your model are good enough, we have the winner prize and also the runner up prize. So these are the most important thing. You can find all this information also from our main website. So we are offering the winner to have 60,000 Hong Kong dollar cash and also 12,000 Huawei Cloud credit for the winner team. 
and the one-up team, we have 45,000 cash and 6,000 Huawei Cloud credit. So also, if you are pitching good enough, we have a pitching score. So these two scores are calculated separately. If you are invited in the pitching ceremony at what pitching stage, you can also fight for the pitching score, winner and one up. So if we have another 45,000 cash and 6,000 Huawei Cloud credit. So if you are good and top and great enough, you may sum up together, have a big total amount of award. Also for each team, if you have joined our explainability scoring, you have a special prize as well. It is on top of it. So this part, I will, I will talk to you later on how to get it. It's not difficult and everyone can do it. So make sure that you are understanding what is the explainability AI in my score and how to get it. So how to get the prize? Here is the problem. The problem statement is here. We, what we need to do is to train a MySport AI model to identify and locate the classifications of the cancer cells in the pathological images. So the AI model will help what help the pathologist in diagnosis the peripheral pulmonary diseases in a simple way, lung cancer. So in terms of a CS point of view, it is a multi-label object detection problem. So how many classes do we have here? Only four classes, not difficult. The first one in simple called SCC, squamous cell carcinoma. The second one is called AC, adenocarcinoma. The third class it is SCLC, small cell lung cancer. And the last one is NSCLC, which is called non-small cell lung cancer. So it looks quite difficult to you guys. For me as well, it's a little bit hard, but don't worry, you can learn it easily. So they look quite similar. So what are the difference? How do we find them as a normal human? How, how, how can we find the, find the differences? Later on, I will tell you. But before we talk about into it, we talk about how to evaluate your model first. So first one is the accuracy. The accuracy problem here is uh, how do we calculate the classification score? I'm not explaining it too much here, so you can find it in the rule books as well. So go online to check the rule book. And if you have questions, find us on Discord and ask our judges and ask our, our admin as well. Another point of view is the explainability. So it is the bonus part that you can get the prize here. So if you participate in the explainability part, you will get another prize. So the total model score is a summation of accuracy score and the explanation score, all right? Top six team, again, will be invited to the final pitching. So try your best to get the highest score at this stage. So, let me give you a very, very brief introduction of lung cancer. Basically, it's just two main types, small cells or non-small cells. Small cell is easy, it's just one type. So there's no, not too much to deal with it. So when you classify a small cell as CLC, that's good, that's, good, that's okay. Another problem is for the non-small cell lung cancer, there is at least two types. One is squamous cell carcinoma. Another one is adenocarcinoma. So, these two types of cells sometimes can be easily to, to be identified by the pathologist, but not always. Sometimes the pathologists themselves, they also have the problem on identifying these types of lung cancer cells, which means it may be SCC or maybe AC, or maybe it's just within the type, but I don't know if it is SCC or AC. If the pathologists, they cannot tell to mine. If it's an SCC or AC, they will just label it as the non-small cell lung cancer. So here's the tricky part, and here's the most difficult part in this data set, or also in, in lung cancer, is to help the pathologists, help the doctors to identify by AI, by you guys, to find out what cells can, or are these non-small cell lung cancer can be really accurately to be identified as SCC or AC. 
So it is your task, it is your challenge. So their treatment and penises and their outlook are always similar. So it is the way, the point that you need to, you need to design your own AI model to do this kind of identification and classification. All right, any problem at this point here? Any questions? One, two, no. Then we go to the next step. How do we get, how do we get this data? How do we get this uh, uh, photos or, or images? Where does it come from? Actually, it's come from your lung. So there is a technique called Brokey brushing. So basically you have a broken scope that goes through into your lung and to find a, and go deep into the brokey. And then there was a brush at the, go deep into, in, into the tube or into the brokey in, in your lung and to obtain the cells from that part. So there's a video that I would like to demonstrate to you to show you. I'm not an expert here. I cannot explain to you too much. I let that video to help you. After preparation with a topical anesthetic, the flexible bronchoscope is inserted through the right nares. The scope is advanced through the nasopharynx and positioned within the larynx just above the vocal cords. Additional anesthetic is instilled through the working channel of the bronchoscope onto the vocal cords. For lobe. Additional anesthetic is instilled in the bronchus and onto the lesion. A cytologic brush is inserted through the working channel of the flexible bronchoscope. The brush is then passed vigorously over the surface of the endobronchial lesion in an attempt to harvest cells for cytologic evaluation. The brush is then smeared on the pathology slide and preserved for cytologic evaluation. So here is the sample of the cell. How do we get it? How does the doctor get it? So, and then with, with that plane that we put it under the microscope, Zoom it in into a, 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 a high magnifier or, or zoom and then crop it into what you are finding, what you're having in your data set one. So, have anybody already downloaded the data set one? Somebody, yes. I see some hands here. Yes, great. So, if you download the data set one, you, already, you will find there is a lot of images with the cells, with the label, and also the coordination as well. So here is your starting point to train your AI models. All right, so I'm not an expert here. Again, if you want to learn more about the pathology, diagnosis, and also explain the AI how to get high score there, you have to join our next session on Monday. So we, are, we have invited Dr. Lawrence Chan, the Associate Professor, uh, of Department of Health Technology and Informatics in, from PolyU Hong Kong, and also our colleague, Dr. Yongxiang Huang, an AI researcher from Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. So they too will explain to you much more on pathology and also on explainable AI. So don't miss it if you want to get high score on next week. All right, so now is the time for you to keep tracking on our website, scan it, and also, if you want to have, if you have questions, if you want to ask us, contact us, join us on Discord. So any kind of questions you can raise up over there and go to GitHub, get resources, and also check the rule books before you, you are participating in, in, the, in, the, in the competition. So you can also find this page, find this slide now on the main website as well. We have just updated, we have just updated the set of slides one hour ago. So if you download the slide yesterday, you have to redownload it again. We make a little bit more, a little bit changes. So at this point, any questions, any problem?
If no, then we move to the next section. I will introduce my colleagues, Mr. Ryan Yan. So he will help us to teach you how to use Huawei Cloud and how to create a notebook on model art. So please, Ryan. So I'll sit down. <laughs> um, Okay, so uh, I'm Ryan, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what is Huawei Cloud. So Huawei Cloud has a lot of features, and uh, of course, not only these, you can see from the right bottom corner, there are quite lots of uh, resources out there. And uh, we will uh, give you a Huawei Cloud account later, so you can log it into it and then uh, explore it by yourself. So uh, there are two things, main things that we are gonna use which is the uh, object storage service, which is the place that you can store your uh, checkpoints, your weight, your model's uh, weight, and your source code. And the other one is the most important part is the model art, which is the uh, one-step develop development platform for AI developers. So uh, we, you will train your model basically on model art, which has a very powerful uh, engine behind it. Okay, now let's uh, log in to this and uh, I'm gonna distribute your account first. Okay, so uh, you can find your account here and uh, it's in the in the CSV files. Uh, I think we have shared it to the Discord. Have we? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, great. So you can find it in the Discord, or you can just uh, check it through here, and then you can go to uh, Huawei Cloud. Just type Huawei Cloud, and then go into this page, and then fill in your name, account name, I am username, I am user password, which is this one, account name, and your I am username, and I am password. Yeah, make sure to find your name on it and uh, your user ID here. So for the people on Zoom session, uh, you can check out the Discord or I'm displaying here. Yeah, uh, I think it's also in the chat room. Yes, thank you. So you can find it in the Discord, in chat room. And here is the team, team uh, the, the account name, which should be here. So I, I'll copy it as well. Let me do it. and your I am username. For me, I'm this one. So put it here. And the last one will be your, uh, not yours, everyone will be the same, this one. MSC2021.
Okay, so uh, just press logged in. Uh, anyone need helps on having login? If no, then we'll go on. Okay, okay, let's go on. Uh, now, what we are going to do is to, where is the PowerPoint? Okay. Okay, what we are going to do now is to uh, familiar with uh, Huawei Cloud and also the Model Arts, uh, the AI platform that we're gonna use for quite a long time. So when you go to, uh, when you're logged in and you can go to uh, the sections and then search Model Arts, there are two, it will be Model Arts and Model Arts Pro. We only use Model Arts. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, another thing that you need to pay attention with is that changing the location to Beijing 4, which has uh, many resources there. <laughs> so you can just change it to Beijing 4, and then you can find Model Arts, and uh, you can go into it. So here, uh, you can see model arts. If you didn't see there, just type model arts and this one, go into it. And uh, remember to choose your location to see a North Beijing 4. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, in this tutorial, we're gonna use uh, a something like a, a Jupyter Notebook. Actually, it is. So you can just go to dev environment here and then press notebooks. Okay. So after you press it, you can see, I think there should be nothing here. Okay. And uh, you can see a uh, notebook here. And then now we're gonna create a new notebook. Uh, so you, after you create, uh, after you press this create button and you will see the config that you're gonna build in. So this one in this page, I'm gonna use the, okay. Please fill in your username, user ID that you can use uh, GPU. So we're gonna uh, create a GPU version first. So you can uh, type your name like GPU underscore user underscore and uh, your ID. Uh, uh, yeah, the ID you logged in. Okay, so after type in your name and then choose one hour, uh, one hour here, and then choose GPU here. So I'm gonna do it now. Uh, I don't change my name. I, I just, okay, maybe something like this. Okay, and uh, one hour here, and then uh, you can find a GPU, this one, mine's for 1.2, CUDA 10.1, and there's a GPU algorithm development, blah, blah, blah. Okay, choose this one, and then go down here, and remember, oh no, there's only one choice. So in this flavor, we choose this one. Okay, so everything set, then you just press create now. All right, it will show the price. Uh, we will not charge you, so just create, it's fine. And then uh, make sure everything's, uh, the work environment is right. And then you can submit it. Okay, and return. After that, you can see the status is creating. So you have to wait a bit. So it's uh, actually an instance that has a environment of uh, Mindspore, have the environment of CUDA there. And then you can just, uh, later on, you can just create, you can just open a Jupyter Notebook based on this environment. Okay, let's wait. Okay, uh, maybe where, while we're waiting, let's go to our main site first. So actually we can see quite lots of things in our main site. Uh, in here, uh, there is a GitHub repository, which we have all the resources and the example code for you. 
So go to the main site and go to the GitHub repository here and uh, open a link, new link, new tab. Okay. So after that, you will go to this GitHub pages and you can see there are resources, training example, documentation, and the evaluation, evaluation example. Documentation is our rule book stuff. So you can check this link or you can just go to rule book from this guideline, okay? Uh, we're not gonna talk about this. So what we're going to do is go to resources. This resources contain two notebook in this folder and uh, please download it from these two links. So after we download it, there should be something like a uh, Jupyter notebook, notebook here, IPyNB. Okay, and save it to your local storage. So this two link, uh, please download it now and store it to your local storage. So far, so good. Okay. So after you have downloaded it, just go to uh, the instance which you have just created, which is here. Okay. So you can see it's running right now and it's counting down. So you can open it from here and it will open a Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab here. What? Can't hear anything now, it works for you. Okay. Hello. Okay, okay. Okay. Can, can you hear now? Okay, let's go on now. So after you uh, open it, you can see the Jupyter Lab here, and then uh, it works totally the same as Jupyter Lab you're familiar with. So you can just upload the notebook you have just downloaded, the beginner one. Don't need to do with the intermediate one first. So just upload the beginner one and put it here and then open it. Okay. And that's so. So you can uh, basically uh, develop your own models on the this kind of notebook if you are familiar with Jupyter Lab, and uh, of course you can do it here. So if everyone has done this step, next we're gonna have a short introduce introductions to MindSpore, and then we will run through the notebooks we have just created. So uh, I will invite Tony, also my colleagues, and uh, give us a introduction on MindSpore. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm Tony. I'm a software engineer of Huawei Hong Kong Research Center. I'm very happy uh, to meet you here today. So what, what is MindSpore? Uh, let me find my mouse cursor. Mysbo is actually one of the uh, AI full stack technology of Huawei, which acts as a, a middleware uh, or in a framework for doing uh, AI and uh, deep learning, which is like uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch, you know? Uh, but the difference between MySpot and, and TensorFlow and PyTorch, we not merely support um, GPU, we also support a hardware called ASAC, which is an um, Huawei decided a, a MPU or AI chips uh, specialized for doing AI computing. So uh, you can see that uh, Huawei provide a full stack solution from the bottom, the, the hardware, the AI chips to the uh, AI software framework. And then the top level uh, cloud application uh, services. So uh, today we are going to use uh, MySpot on uh, model arts. 
So Mansbot is uh, mainly interfaced to the Python free programming languages. Uh, the, the main uh, interface you will be using is called Mansbot dataset, which is responsible for loading various uh, data from, from the file systems. And uh, you will also have to define your own AI model, the with so-called uh, uh, the model architecture. Um, these are the, the packages you will be using. So uh, for the explainable part, you can uh, refer to the model, uh, the MySport doc explainer, which provides a various method of, uh, of generating uh, explanation that is a uh, savings map for different uh, CV computer vision model. So uh, the, the counterpart of um, TensorFlow or PyTorch is uh, basically like this. So that is the, the reference. So what exactly is a, a model in, in MySpot? The first thing you have, you got to have a, 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 a data set. Uh, maybe it's a, a collection of photos with uh, ground truth labels. And then you will have to define your uh, network architecture or the model architecture in Python. With uh, these two uh, pieces of, of work, then you can combine to define a, a model. A model is a, a, a high level wrapper for easy training or evaluating the network. So with all this stuff, you can uh, build your own AI services or AI apps. So today we are going to, uh, to, to do two tutorial. The first one is the beginner level tutorial, which uh, will, we will experience how to use the MySpot dataset, um, how to define our new network architecture, and of course, uh, train the model. The second part is the intermediate tutorial, uh, which will, we, will, we are going to train a, our Euro V3 models, which is a, a very uh, classical and effective models for doing um, uh, object detections. So uh, maybe it is highly related to the, the competitions we have. And then of course, uh, using uh, the OBS model art and et cetera. So the first tutorial uh, will be run on uh, GPUs. Uh, as I mentioned, MySpot also uh, support both GPU and SN. The second tutorial will be run on SN, SN hardware. So is anyone uh, created your own notebook uh, instance on model art? Is there any problem? Please raise up your hand if, if you cannot do that. Okay, no problem. So uh, this is the uh, notebook tools. Uh, it's a very popular tools for doing AIs or, or, or data scientists, same data science. So the first part is uh, import all the necessary libraries for that, uh, for our workshop. So the main part is the, uh, the most important part is the, the MySpot one. So we are using the NN package for defining different operators and then the data set. So we just select it and click run. So, okay, after you seeing the, the number here, which means the, the code segment is complete. And then the other part is uh, setting the context, uh, which is uh, a bit tricky uh, for that because uh, Huawei support uh, SNs or GPU or CPUs. So here we specify the, the device targets as a GPU and we do it in a graph mode. Graph mode is um, like a, a more optimized mode. So your model will be run in a fast, in a fast, fast speed. And then we do it. After that, we have to download uh, the, the data set. We, we are using the MINUS data set, which is a, um, a, a data set uh, for uh, recognizing the handwritten digital character from zero to nine. 
Okay, it is done. So you can you can see that a, a folder, um, a, a data set folder is created here. We can do a little bit of uh, exploration for that. So you can see there's a two folder, one for training your model and one for testing your model. So here, uh, this co this code segment is defining our path, the, the data path, one for training and one for testing. And then we have to, to create our own uh, data set loader here. So which is uh, actually a Python functions that uh, create a data set object that loads the minus data set. So now uh, we can try to explore a bit more up about our images. So with that uh, code segment, you can see that our data set size is uh, uh, 468 and the testing data set size is also 468. The, uh, the model or the new network we are using today is called DNet5, uh, which is in a very um, classical and simple uh, new network for recognizing images or the, the, in, in this case is uh, the handwriting of the, of the zero to nine digits, we cons which is uh, quite simple. Uh, I, I cannot get the image here, but it consists of um, layer, uh, um, a layer of convolutions and, uh, and uh, some max pooling layer, and uh, finally and a uh, fully connected layer at the, at the end. So first we have to include the uh, import the NN package. This is the um, most frequently used package for in my spot for defining your uh, AI models. After importing that, we can start defining your, uh, your model. Um, because a Python is um, object orient, oriented uh, programming language, which is uh, one of its uh, key features. So we define our linear model in a, in the OO manner. So we first we have to subclass from the NN dot cell, and then we have to define our constructor. The constructor will be uh, taking all the hyperparameter, um, not, maybe not all the hyperparameter, some of the hyperparameter that are determining the architecture or the dimension inside your model's um, structure, such as the number of classes. Since we have nine, uh, 10 digits, so the number of classes is 10, and the uh, feature channels, we, we define it. We just leave it as a run default. So this is all the uh, layers, the convolution layer and the fully connected layer. We have to define it in the constructor to, to instantiate, uh, as you say, in the constructor. And there is a, another very important function is called construct, which is uh, equivalent to, to the, the for function in PyTorch, which means the, um, the model will go through the calculations inside that function. So basically that function is equivalent to your model uh, structures. So we need have a run here. And then uh, after defining the Linet classes, we instantiate a instance here. Uh, I, I skip this part here. So uh, how do you uh, use your models? You just simply use it as an, a function. So I is an um, a data set, uh, a row in the data set and image is, uh, the image key is responsible for the tensor, the image tensor. So we have a run here. So um, at, the, at the first time you run your, um, your model on your network is a little bit slow because we are in the graph mode. Graph mode means um, the MySpot engine will do an uh, optimization on your model. So it takes a little bit a longer of time to run at the first time. So uh, just repair a little bit of uh, patience. Uh, is there any problem here? Okay. 
okay maybe you can for the beginner level of uh, the tutorial maybe uh, you can follow the step with me So here is the output that returned by this, uh, this statement. The return value is um, actually a classification result of the linear five. You can see that uh, the, the tensor is actually an, um, a, a 2D matrix that with uh, 128 uh, rows and uh, 10 columns. So uh, each column represents the classification score of each digit, so uh, the 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 zero column responsible for the uh, the zero digits, and the one two eight uh, is uh, the the size of the batch. So you can see that there's a one two eight uh, size one two eight rows of in in that uh, result, but you can see that the number here is quite random, which is because the network or the model is not yet trained with the data. So now we have to define the multiple model and train up our network. So first we have to decide what loss function we are using since uh, it is a uh, single label classification problem. So which means uh, you can only classify your handwriting into either zero or one or two. This is only one possibility. So we are using the uh, softmax cost entropy with logics and we set the sparse to true, which means we are not taking the uh, one hot and cooked ground truth label. We are taking the, uh, the index label. And then we use the uh, very basic uh, Adam uh, optimizer. And we put all the network definition, the loss function, the optimizer, uh, and the metrics we care, which uh, we can use the very basic accuracy metric in the model. So after creating model, we can train it. First, uh, we load the data set here, uh, the train data set, of course, and then we create some checkpoints. These checkpoints are used for reporting the loss function, the, the losses uh, of the model and saving the model checkpoints um, in between. And then we call the uh, train functions and um, the epochs is equal to five, which means uh, the training will go through the, the whole data sets uh, one by one, the picture by picture uh, for five times. Uh, again, uh, training a model is sometimes uh, quite uh, time consuming. So we have to give it a little bit of time. So you can see that in each epoch, uh, the, the loss value will be given. So you can see that the loss is uh, gradually uh, uh, going down. So uh, five epoch is finished. Then we can uh, see the result. Oh, <laughs> maybe the, the training is not good enough or not long enough. So I uh, hear the, the, uh, the result is uh, showed by PLT, the protein uh, function, the protein library of uh, Python. And the top left corner is the ground truth ladle, which is the, the true uh, digit that represented by this handwriting. And then the prediction is the result given by the model. But um, the more maybe five effort is not good enough, so the model doesn't do quite well. Uh, so it always gives prediction of one. So uh, in your um, uh, in your work, your maybe one of the major challenge is to how to train the, the network. So you maybe to trick about uh, the learn the different uh, hyperparameters such as the learning rate or the number of airports. 
is is there any any questions or problem? It is a very simple uh, tutorial. I hope you will go through the step on your own one by one. So uh, the second tutorial is the intermediate tutorial, which is uh, for, we, we are going to do an uh, Euro V3 object detection. So, I will download the Jupyter Notebook and create a new instance. So as I said, uh, MySpot um, not merely supports GPU, but also support essence. So um, in this uh, intermediate tutorial, I will, I will uh, create an, an instance that based on uh, essence. So we will check uh, selecting this uh, environment. You can see that the description is essence and uh, ARM CPU for chain. So uh, here, the flavor we, we are choosing the single SN910 uh, uh, chips. And then we press create. Okay. Just like the, the step before, but uh, we are using the SN chips. Any problem? So it takes a little bit of time of creating the instance. If you have any question, please raise your hand. Um, Brian is very helpful, don't be shy. <laughs> okay. Um, our our notebook instance is up and running, so I can open it. Open the notebook interface. Okay. Okay, just like the, the tutorial, tutorial notebook to the left, left file panels. Okay. We double click to open it. Any problem so far? So this tutorial will be more uh, Complicated. Um, so if you have problem, no, uh, uh, you obstacle that uh, no problem. Maybe you just, uh, just go through. And uh, this time we were downloading the uh, data set called data set one from the OBS the object um, storage services of Huawei and trained the Huawei field model. This data set. Uh, will be the actual data set you're using to training your own models. So first thing first, we also import all the necessary libraries we need. Uh, 
don't you can ignore that, which is only the the version one of the URL lib. So here we, we are going to set again the context. So the device context would be SN uh, this time, which is not not uh not complementary, but we just put it here for the sake of here. Uh, So if you want to debug your model, uh, you can use the pinative mode. Pinative mode means uh, the, the, the statement inside your construct function of the model will be ran in uh, Python. So you can uh, print all the things or setting a breakpoint in between. So here, this is the URL of the data set, which is actually the same as the same data, exact same data set you are using for this competition. So you can see that the download uh, command is beginning exclamation mark, which means this command is not run in Python, but run in uh, shell script, run in shell. So again, we, we have uh, successfully download our data set. We're gonna do a little bit of exploration. So you can see there's a loss of um, around 200 BMP of uh, cancer cell images. We can open it and have a, have a look. So it's fairly high. Density. Okay. Okay, let's go back. So we have to define a different path for training or reading the, the labels of the data set here. And the, the YOLO uh, model script is quite complicated, so we are not going to put it here. But we instead, we have an um, GitHub that store all the um, YOLO Wi-Fi architecture script. So we use a Git clone here to download it uh, to the SLC directory. And then here we, append the SLC to our system path so we, we can include the, uh, the script inside. So we can do a little bit of exploration here to show one the, the first uh, sample images here. After that, we can define a various hyperparameter of, since it is a, a, a single MPU, uh, which is typically the case of your, you, you are facing. So uh, I won't discuss more of this, but uh, for, for, for this part, it's quite important. The first thing is the learning rate, which defines how fast your model, how your model uh, will learn. And then the number of epochs, which means the number of times that the model scan through the whole entire data set. And then the batch size, you can make it too large because of the limitation of the hardware memory and the law scale. That's uh, how large is your loss value. And then uh, this part is for making uh, the data set objects for the uh, pathology data set, uh, which mainly use the, the scripts from the SLC package that we just downloaded. So we don't have to worry about it too much. And then we try to load the data set here.
since the, the image is quite large, um, and then it is um, in a BMP format, it's not in uncompressed format. So it took a little bit while of uh, reading it here. Is anyone following my, my step? <laughs> Any problem? So maybe I, I, I can talk a little bit more about uh, loading the data set. Um, the data set will grow for a series of transformation because uh, for each model, uh, the, the CV model, the computer vision model, the input of the, the data set or of the input tensor will be fixed and the format will be fixed. So there, there is a lot of things happen inside the uh, create YOLO data set here. Okay. Okay, CFG is not defined. Maybe I maybe I run this again. Okay, here here we are. here we are. We successfully load the data data set and the uh, apple size is eighty. The data data set size is eighty. Okay. Now we can um, initialize our network. Uh, what, what is initialization? Because um, at, the be at the very beginning, if your network is not trained, all the weights or parameter inside is not defined. So we would like to, to, to random to do an initialization with some uh, random generator. The initializer here is called Savior Uniform. It's, it's a kind of a, a random generator that to initialize your model's parameter. Uh, so you can ignore this warning for now here because uh, we are using a depre some deprecated operator called TensorAd here. So uh, in your model, you may using a more new uh, operator called Add instead of TensorAd here. So here, uh, we are going to train our model. First, uh, we need to, to define um, a learning weight scheduler, which means uh, the learning weight is going, going down slowly or decay slowly as long as the, the training step goes on. And then uh, some uh, checkpoint, uh, co checkpoint configuration and the checkpoint callbacks, which will save uh, our, check, our models, our checkpoint version Period periodically. Then the, we will train train free epochs, which means we go through and scan through the entire data set for uh, 50 times. So you can see the, the printer here. I start training your wifi, but the first epoch will be slower because the graph compilation. The graph compilation is um, a feature, a key feature of uh, MySpot uh, because um, everything inside your model, the, 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 the construct function, which I have mentioned it in the last tutorial, is actually a computational graph. So in uh, graph mode, mean, which means that uh, before running the, the, uh, the, the model, we will have to do a compilation to do a a series of optimization, which uh, will take some time at the, very, uh, at the first time, but after that, um, it, the, the uh, computation speed will be speed up, will be faster a lot. Okay, it is still going here. So anyone here has 
uh, other deep learning experience in TensorFlow or PyTorch. <laughs> also, you do. So maybe I, I can talk a little bit more about your V3. You can just. So your V3 your is a very um, popular uh, models for doing the, the object detection. It has a, a series of uh, residual layer, and then it uh, detect the object in three different scales. And the output uh, of the Euro V3 is um, a series of anchor box, which is like an unbounding box and the score of different uh, classifications. So in our cases, uh, there is a uh, four classes of uh, cancer cells. So there will be four uh, class classification confidence and then uh, in each scale or uh, uh, it will output a series of uh, a collection of uh, the anchor box so let me check if that finish okay so is this still going here So maybe in your um, uh, in your competition you work, your backbone could based on that uh, that uh, intermediate tutorial. Uh, you can reuse the Euro Wi-Fi model, but uh, you can have your own uh, 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 tuning for that, uh, such as the learning weight, the apple size, and etc. Or the optimizer you can change it if you like. And besides that, uh, in uh, in that notebook, you can check your um, GP, CPU usage or memory usage here. That is the, the graph. So if you see the, the code is hanging, it's not responding, and the, the CPU is um, drops to zero, which means that something is got stuck, you may stop or restart your Jupyter kernel. And then we run the code. Maybe we just go through the coming cook salmon. Um, assume we have, oh, here, you can see that. The training is um, having progress, printing out uh, the loss value of your model in every 10 epoch.
So I assume we are we finished the training, then we can go to the inference cook segment. The uh, uh, inference cook segment will uh, turn the output of your neural reefing model into the bounding boxes. The bounding box is actually the pixel coordinate of the uh, of the detected objects. And then after that, uh, we can uh, print out uh, the result and do the um, um, and do an overlay overlaying annotations of the image of the original images. So we, we, we still got 10 more airport to go. So almost finished here. Okay, finished. 30 airport. And then we can run the inference. So again, we are we are going to test. Uh, inference or the the Euro VP the train the Euro VP model in the with the test data set. So you can see that um, in the for the network that used for uh, inference that not for training we can set use the set train to force which can uh, uh, increase our learning speed and reduce the memory usage. So now here is the final part. We do the um, utilization for that. So in this co segment, we will um, go through the test data set and then um, put the annotation that predicted by our Euro VP model and show it on the screen. But it also take a little bit of time to complete. So there's a there's a attending as uh, where can I find the files to download and 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 try the tutorial? So uh, everything is uploaded to the to the uh, challenge website. So maybe uh, Phoenix will will reiterate it at the at the end of this tutorial. So here we are. So um, you can see that uh, there's the, the sample, the test sample here. Uh, you have the annotation, the predicted annotations, and the bounding box here. So which one is which one? Let me see. Okay, the, the ground truth bounding box will be in blue. And the predicted bounding box is in red. So we can see that it, we have a uh, I think it's pretty good result here already. 
consider that we uh, trained our model in a relatively short time, but uh, you know that in some cases it correctly uh, detect the problematic cell. So, so all your, your work to do, need to do in this competition is um, tuning the model or even um, building the new model on your own. And then if you have a spare time, you can uh, think of how to do the explanation part. For the uh, explanation, uh, the more detail will be grow further in the next Monday's tutorial. Okay, to the good results. If your checkpoint, the, the checkpoint is representing all the learned uh, parameter or the weighting inside your model, which is uh, in extension of CKPT. So you can um, copy your checkpoint file to the OBS here, but I'm not going, going, to, uh, going through this step here. So any, any problem, any questions here? That's it. Uh, this is all the workshop here today. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, there's another session for Ryan. So, uh, so we will have a break here. So before the break, let's have a group photo first, and then we will take a uh, five minute breaks. And when we come back, Ryan will help us to talk about how to submit your model onto our evaluation platform. That's the most important, most important part. You need to submit your work. So why don't we teach you how to submit? So when you get admitted into the competition, you will have an account to our uh, main website. And then there is a way for you to submit your model and show you the ranking board immediately. So don't, don't, don't go away, especially for the people that are online. So uh, we take a five minutes break and then we have a group photo now. So uh, for the people on site, let's move to the, to the back of the room. We have the big backdrop there. So uh, our photographer, please help. Yep, thank you. So for the online people, see you later after I think 10 minutes, right? So uh, at 410, 410, come back, please. Thank you. Okay, hello guys. <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll start another, uh, the last session of today's. So uh, we're going to talk about the model training and evaluations. So uh, we have just tried out the model arts. We have just tried out the mind school. And we also have just tried out the, how to create a notebook on the model arts. But now uh, it's the most important part, which is when you have already registered and you have received your confirmation email, then you can start participating to this contest. Contest, and uh, when you are doing uh, the contest, you have to train your own model, and which is not that uh, 100, 200 uh, images. We'll give you 4,000 image to you uh, for you to train. So you cannot just only use the notebook anymore because that's too uh, slow for you. So we have another uh, methods for you that can train a lot of uh, images and epochs at the same time. So now I'm going to tell, uh, teach a little bit about how to use that. Okay, we have already uh, go through this already. Uh, for these sessions, we don't really need to uh, follow. Uh, there's no hands-on for now. So uh, I'll just go through the slides and I'll uh, demo it once. So, and that's that's all, okay. So uh, this is the training flow. And you can see that uh, if you want to train your own model, you have to go through these steps. So in the first time, it will be kind of complicated, but actually it's very simple. So first you have to upload your source code to OBS, which is, stands for the cloud storage service on the model uh, on the Huawei cloud. And after you have uploaded your source code and you can start to create an algorithm, which contains your source code. And then after that, you can link to the data set URL and label URL to the uh, 4,000, uh, 5,000 images that for you to train your models. And after that, you can create a training job 
uh, of course, create multiple training jobs, and then uh, start to train your own model on the Huawei Cloud Model Arts. After that, you'll receive a checkpoint, and that checkpoint and the source code, you can upload it to our platform, and then we will uh, calculate a score for you. So after calculating the score, you will show uh, you will show your ranking on your ranking board. So uh, next, let's go on to upload code to OBS. So uh, you can download uh, you can uh, download MindSpore on your own uh, local uh, local uh, environment, and then you can develop in your local environment as well. And after that, you can upload your all, all your code to OBS. You can also uh, develop your code on the notebook we just introduced. So, um, OBS, you can create your own bucket, which is a little bit like uh, maybe some Amazon S3, something like that. So, you can upload your code, upload your checkpoint, output your checkpoint, uh, everything you want to put onto the uh, Power Cloud, you can just put it here first. And then later on, you can use uh, create an algorithm, create a training jobs based on these uh, uh, storage. Okay, so bucket is a. Uh, I can show it here. When we go to object storage service. Okay, we don't really have to follow this step by step, but you, if you want to, then you can just uh, also check it out here. So you can see there are quite a lot of buckets. You can, you can uh, create a lot of buckets here. And then you can also create a bucket here. And then uh, the region will be Beijing 4. And then uh, you can uh, specify your configuration here. Uh, mostly standard is enough already. And the name of the bucket. And the bucket name should be uh, globally unique. OK, so uh, have a nice name here and then after that you can create a new bucket after that go into that bucket and then you can see a lot of objects here uh, which is maybe your code for example i have upload my example code here uh, in the, this source file and you can see uh, the, the yolo v3 python file here uh, and other, another file related to it so you can upload your source code here and uh, you can also output a checkpoint here and the, the log here. And then you can download it from here and upload it as well. Okay, so this is uh, like a file explorer online. So uh, it should be simple. Okay, next move on. So uh, we have, uh, we suggest you that you can follow these uh, file structures on online uh, on the on your uh, OBS, which is more uh, which is sim uh, more simple for you uh, to to train your job. Okay, so now uh, I'll go on to uh, use model arts to train a a job, uh, a a a source code. Okay, first of all. Uh, we're gonna use the example source code downloaded also from the GitHub, downloaded from here, MSC21 training example. You can see there are quite a lot of things here. So uh, you can see the releases and then downloaded this, download this zip file and which contains uh, these Python file. And the entry point will be this trend.py. Uh, it can be any, it can be any any file name, just uh, whatever you like. Okay. So I just use Notepad. So uh, you can see that uh, kind of similar as what we have done in the notebook, and uh, you can check this. <clears throat> There's a entry point here, and then we have some arguments that uh, we will add some argument that uh, as a hyperparameter, later on you can pass in the data URL, the last set URL while you want to chain, when you want to chain. Okay, so I, I'm not gonna go through all of this. I'll just uh, download it. And then after that, you can upload it to your OBS. So I have already uploaded to here. 
Uh, this is the same as what I've downloaded from GitHub. Okay. Uh, after this session, you can also try it at home, and then you can you can uh, also create an algorithm based on this. Now I'm gonna create a algorithm based on the source code, which I have just uploaded. And remember to choose Beijing Four. Okay, and go on to algorithm management, and then you can create your algorithm here. Okay, so back to my slide. You can see that if you want to create an algorithm based on your source code, after upload it to the OBS, and then you can choose uh, also the configuration here, uh, naming your algorithm, and then uh, choose the code directory to the OBS, which you have just uploaded your files. Uh, this is code directory is the whole folder contains your entry point Python file. And the boot file is the Python file, uh, which contains the main functions, uh, is the entry point of your whole source code. Okay, and after that, uh, you can see there's a code directory here, boot file, this is the, the, the one that you have just uploaded. Okay, and next, uh, you have to tune your hyperparameter, not tune, just uh, add your hyperparameters. Uh, I have up, uh, added dataset URL, label URL, metadata URL. These three files, which is uh, in our own bucket and uh, it's not accessible by, uh, uh, by public. So uh, it can be only read and you cannot list it out or uh, write it down because uh, this uh, or has a strict uh, policy on it. And then, uh, you have to uh, specify these three, or you can just uh, based on the code, uh, the code that you have just created. Uh, for example, uh, because I have already added this here, so I'm using this. But you can just create like a maybe love URL, and then you can just put it love URL here. So it's only based on your code, and you can also hard code these to your own code. You don't have to add hyperparameter every time. So these three will be linked to a unique place uh, I'll show later. So these three will be a link to the data set two for this contest. Okay. And then I'll demo it real quick right now. So I'll create an algorithm and uh, make sure to name it uh, that you can understand it. And then this one, you have to choose AI engine, you can choose, uh, there are quite lots of it, and we choose SN Power Engine and MindSpore 1.3. And after that, you can link your code directory to the trend example, uh, which I have just uploaded. Anything you have uploaded to any uh, uh, folder and just link to that folder. Okay, I'm linking to this. And then the boot, which is uh, the entry point, uh, trend.py, okay? And after specify all of this, and then you can add hyperparameters. Based on my code, I have to add these three, data set URL, metadata URL, and label URL. Okay, so I'll add it now. Oh, no, I'm gonna, not gonna add it. Too, too slow. <laughs> anyway, so just uh, add it here, I have a parameter here, and then choose a string, but it's all based on your code. If you don't want to add here, you can hard code it here as well. Okay, and after all, you have to, uh, you can see that there's two default parameters, which is called data URL and trend URL. Data URL should be the data set URL, but actually uh, we don't really care about this. Uh, we will, um, just uh, choose a random folder for this data URL because we'll um, we'll cover it. You can see from the code. So uh, data set data URL will become data set URL. Uh, in my code, I already cover it. So data URL will be uh, not not used. And then trend URL, uh, you have to specify clearly which is your model output. And I've specified here. So your checkpoint, your weight will be output to this folder, and you can download it from your folder. Uh, this one will be also your OBS, <coughs> uh, OBS URL, 
Okay, and after submit it, Okay, after submitted it, you can see uh, the algorithm here. And after you click inside it, you can see the directory here, the boot file here, and all the specifications here, and the hyperparameters. And after that, you can, uh, based on this algorithm, to create a training job. So uh, after you have uh, created the algorithm, you can create a training job based on this. And then you have to specify the training input and output. But input, as I say in my code, that I don't really care about the input here, uh, the, the default data URL here, because I'll set another URL linking to my data set two. Okay. And next, you have to fill in the data set URL, the label URL, metadata URL. You can see this MSC21 data set two. This one is uh, our bucket. So uh, when you want to train, you have to link to these three uh, uh, links, which contains the 4,000 images. <clears throat> so the structure is that you have to specify uh, the, the, these three hyperparameters, or you can hard code it to your code. And then this is in your own bucket. But we have our bucket, which contains all the image data set and the label data set, uh, label and the metadata. And then these two will create a train job on model Rs. And it will start training it and it give you the output. So how this uh, works, because we uh, there's another thing called moxing. So moxing framework, you can uh, check it here. I don't really uh, talk about this here, but uh, this one, will link your OBS to the model arts. So you can see that the moxing file copy parallel, and then it will copy the data set and to the model arts. Okay, then I'll demo how to create a trend job. Here, trending management, and there, there are two. So uh, choose this new one, trending jobs. Okay, and you can create the trending job and then here you can specify the algorithm which you have just created. Okay. After you choose it, and it will ask you to uh, put in your data URL. But as I said, I don't really care about this data URL. So I'll just, uh, I'll just put maybe this one, I don't care. Okay, but the training output training URL, which will contain uh, your output training output checkpoint, you have to specify clearly. So I just put it, maybe the output folder, okay? And then these three will specify as here. Okay, so this three URL has already linked to official OBS of, of the, uh, which contains data set two. Okay, after specify all of this, choose ascent and remember choose one. You can see uh, the default is eight. So they are quite expensive. Uh, we, we don't really need that. So we just choose one and then uh, you can see it's about 20, uh, 20, how to say that, Ramin B. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And then after that, you have to also to choose the log path. And this one also linked to the OBS. And maybe I'll just also choosing the same output as the checkpoint. Okay. After all of this, check it. And then you can submit it. And that's all. Okay. And you can see now it's pending and later on will be running. And sometimes you will fail, but uh, I hope you can complete it. So after you complete it, 
you can check uh, it's the log here and you can see what they have done. And uh, maybe if it failed and you can see what's wrong uh, into your code. Okay. And after that, you can also check to your OBS and then see the output of the checkpoint and you can download it and submit to our evaluation platform. And we will give you a score based on it. Okay. So we will not wait until it's, okay, now it's running. So after that, I think it will complete. So you can also try it uh, based on the code here. So uh, we don't really have to try it here, but uh, later on you can also try it at home. Okay, so that's all for you to train a model on Huawei Cloud. It's actually very simple. So uh, let's recap very quickly. You have to upload your code to OBS and then create an algorithm. And then after that, create a training job. And that training job have to link the data set URL, label URL, and also the metadata URL to our official OBS. And then that's all. You can create it and then run it, your code. Now, uh, after, eval uh, after training it, the last step, is to evaluate on our website. So uh, this step, you will receive a score based on it, and then you can see your ranking and see if you have a, a rank as high as others. And you will short, if, if you are shortlisted in the uh, last final pitching session. Okay, so this uh, platform, I think some of you have already registered and some of you have already checked it but I'll go through here. Okay, so after you get into this, and then some of you maybe have registered already. And after registration, uh, these two days, uh, one week, we will send you a confirmation email with a code, passcode, and then you can uh, create your, new, your own password, and then you can log in to our system. So uh, of course I can log in now, but... Uh, I can just show you a little bit about uh, what is inside. So this platform, you can see immediately from the landing page that there's uh, your submission history, and this is the ranking page. Uh, this is the ranking. So now uh, this is me, which has a very low score. So anyway, I think you can uh, beat me quickly. Okay, and you can see the detail ranking here, and then you can see your own submission history here and your status is completed. And then you can also check your logs, log file here, which is the same as the, uh, the one on the model arts and OBS. And then you can also check the, rank, uh, the, the scoring, we'll uh, draw a score uh, for the FROC accuracy. Okay. And then now we can also create a new submissions. So everyone have 30 trials to evaluate your own models. So be careful of what you have submitted. Don't try your own model here. Try it on your model arts first. And then after you can uh, uh, confirm that it will complete and it's work, and then you, you, you upload it to here. So this place, you can upload uh, your own source code and also the checkpoint. Uh, I have an example file. You can also check it. Uh, you can also check it here. There's an evaluations eva example here. And then uh, in this release, we have tried two. One is CNN, another is the YOLO v3. So uh, you can also download a checkpoint here and a Python file here. Remember carefully that the entry point should be participant underscore model.py. We only recognize this Python file. So if you choose like man.py, trend.py, we don't really recognize it and it will fail it. Okay, so after you download it, uh, I'll test it here and then upload your checkpoint file and the Python file here. And then you can see what you have uploaded and confirm and submit. And then it will start uh, testing, evaluating. So you can see 
uh, it's already started the evaluation and then you can go to submission history and you will see that it's now testing a model and it's initiate, uh, initializing. Okay, so that's all for how to evaluate your own model and the checkpoint file should be downloaded from these sessions. So after you create the trend job and complete it, so there will be a checkpoint file output to your uh, trend URL and then download it from there, download it from OBS and then upload it to here. And then you can see your final score here. So this is the whole uh, submission flow of the, uh, this contest. And you can see the submission history and you can see the status, which is the server side status uh, output from us and the model art status output from the model arts, Huawei Cloud. And then you can see there are three scores, FROC score, which is your accuracy and the explainable AI score and uh, the total score. And you can check your log FROC graph. Okay. These source, uh, you can download it also from GitHub. And then you can check your rank uh, here and everyone's rank here. And it will choose your highest score output to this ranking board. Okay, so that's all for the um, training and evaluation session. Is there any questions? No? So um, uh, we have just received a Q and A online. So to talk about how can we find the slides today, and will the recording be uploaded? Yes, the recording will be uploaded after editing. So also, if you want to find the slide, go to the main web page, go to the main website, mysportchallenge.com, and look for the useful resources. All the material you have today for the training, for the evaluation, you can find here. Um. If you have any problem, really, 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 you may not raise it now, but you will have you will face it, you will meet it later on, no matter on Model Arts, on the Huawei Clouds, on our submission platform, or on my score. Please, please, please raise your problem and questions on Discord. So register, register the Discord account now and log into the server. So we are all there to support you guys to get our prizes. All right. So um one more reminder, you have only 30 trials on the submission, on the submission platform. So uh, train your model, test your model on model art first. For each team, you will be granted uh, have uh, 3,000 credit for you to train. So you have enough training power. So make use of the power, make use of the AI. So if you have any questions, problem again on Discord, find it. So I would like to thank you all today to join us for the training. Uh, see you on Monday, again, the same time, 2.30, the same, same room. And for the online, you have another link, another link, Zoom link that you receive it on, on the email. If you do not have it, find it and get it on Discord. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you all. Thank Ryan, thank Tony. Thank you.